This is the performance and tutorial for a perfect match. It's one of several new card magic routines I've been developing. This one is based on Ed Marlowe's Leipzig would have loved this. There are several variations, but none like this. Other than the basic plot, the entire routine has been revamped, including new handling and an amazing new ending. There are a couple shuffles you might have already seen, and there are a couple shuffles I'm sure you have never seen. The routine allows for a spectator to handle and interact with the cards, so I had to do some video editing to get my guest into the picture. You'll see in a second. But the magic routine itself is completely legit. Do not believe for one second that video editing was used to create the card magic part because after the presentation, I'm going to show you how to do it. I have two sets of cards. Each set contains the first 13 cards you would find in a brand new deck, starting with the Ace of Spades. I want you to notice the boxes are completely empty and also notice the blue set is in numerical order ace through king and the red set is also in numerical order ace through king. Please welcome my guest who's going to help out today. Okay, go ahead and name a color red or blue. Or you can just point to your selection. Okay, blue. Are you sure you want blue? You can switch. Okay, we'll place the set you chose back inside the empty box and leave it safely off to the side for now. I'll take the red and we don't need this anymore. I'm going to mix the red cards using a shovel shuffle. That's where you shovel cards off from the left and right. Or shuffle, shuffle, shovel, shuffle. It mixes the cards. I want to show you another one called a randomizer shuffle. It randomizes the cards. It's super easy even if you're unfamiliar with handling cards. Deal the cards down one at a time. And at any time you want, you switch the top card with the next one. You can deal one at a time or you can switch them at any time. Switch the two and drop them both. You can deal, you can switch. It's up to you. So go ahead and mix them up some more using a randomizer shuffle. You're doing great. Beautiful. To make it a little more interesting, let's take a peek at the bottom card, whatever it might be. A seven? Okay, turn them back over and deal the cards down one at a time. And when you get to the seventh card, turn it face up. Turn it face up. Good. Finish dealing the rest of the cards down and you can randomize or shuffle them if you like. Perfect. Now the set you chose has been safely inside this box the whole time. This is a shake shifter shuffle. You shake and then they shift. And we don't need this anymore. Now if I shake shifter shuffle the blue cards right, they should match the order of the red. Turn over the red set so they're face up and hold them like you're going to deal, but face up. Perfect. You have the ace. I have the ace. I know, not so amazing. Deal the ace down and let's see the next card. You have the eight. I have the eight. Keep going. You have the two. I have the two. You have the nine. I have the nine. You have the three. I have the three. You have the ten. I have the 10. You have a face down card. I have a face down card. This one is the four. You have a jack. I have a jack. Let's go a little faster. You have the five. I have the five. 
You have the queen, I have the queen. You have the six, I have the six. You have the king, I have the, wait a minute, you need a little more shake. You have the king, I have the king. And you have the seven, and I have the seven. Amazing. Now turn over the red cards and spread them out a little so we can see the inverted card. Very nice. There's one more shuffle I'd like to show you. It's called the Table Snap Shade Shifter Shuffle. I know it sounds like I'm making it up, but you just snap and it shifts the color to match the other set. You can see all the blue cards are red. Turn over the four so we can see. A perfect match. I hope you enjoyed that. In creating this routine, my goal was to find a way to cause the same effect as Leipzig would have loved this, but to also include at the end a full color change of the backs of one entire group, just as you saw. And after many trials and errors, I'm now going to share with you what I came up with in order to pull this off. But before I do, just remember, if you don't want to know the secrets, then watch no further. Because once you do know, you can't unknow. We'll give a couple seconds for those who don't want to know. Okay, here we go. First of all, there are no difficult slides to learn. You might be asking, well, how could that be? Well, there are a couple moves, but nothing that takes hours and hours of practicing in order to perfect. You will need two brand new decks of red backed cards. Don't use old grungy cards. Remove the ace through king of spades from each deck. And if you haven't already done so, now is the perfect time to start your stock of spare cards. You will need one blue box and one red box. Use the other red box to hold some of your newly acquired spare cards. You will need a blue backed seven of spades and a double back card with a red on one side and blue on the other. You can buy an entire deck of red blue double backs at the online magic shop of your choice or you can make one. Please watch my video that shows how to make your own gaff cards. We're going to make three gimmicked cards and a quick thought on gimmicks. Not every routine should use gimmicks, but gimmicks are very powerful. Squeeze a gimmicked routine in between several non-gimmicked routines. The best time to use a gimmick is when everyone believes you're not using gimmicks. So you will need either a can of Tester's Dull Coat, number 1260, or a can of Krylon Matte Finish, number 1311. I've used both and they both work. I'll explain in a minute. The first thing is to gimmick the three cards. Place one of the sets off to the side. This set will be legit ace through king with all red backs. The other set will be gimmicked. Remove the red backed seven of spades. Get rid of it. We don't need it because we're replacing it with the blue backed seven of spades you can add this one to your collection of spare cards. Remove the four of spades. These are the three cards we're going to treat with dull coat or the matte finish spray. It's basically a clear spray paint with a flat, rough textured finish. Here's how it works. I've treated the blue side of each of these two cards. When the two treated sides are touching and you put pressure, they stick together as one. You put less pressure, 
they'll separate. Or if they're in any other order, such as one treated side against a non-treated side, they'll separate. The non-treated sides will slide, and that's another reason for using new cards. You want them to slide very easily and the treated ones to stick when pressure is applied, especially when you're with another card. You can go like this and move them around. This is two cards there. Once again, these are the three cards we're going to treat. The red back four of spades, the blue back seven of spades, and the double back red blue card. The blue backs will be treated on the entire back and the red backs will be treated on only half. And keep in mind, I had plenty of failures before coming up with this solution, so bear with me. Begin with the red backs. Tape down a piece of paper or something to cover one half. Then spray them lightly, more of a mist, like so. They will be dry enough to gently touch in about 15 minutes. Gently turn over the double back card, add the blue back seven of spades, and treat the entire blue backs. Make sure to keep any other cards away from the spray so they're not ruined. They will dry in about two hours, but I prefer to leave them overnight to fully cure. They will last longer. And after you've used them many times and they've stopped working to your satisfaction, you may need to retreat them. The gimmicked cards are cured and ready to go. Grab the set that's missing the four and the seven. Place the four in its numerical location. Place the seven in its numerical location. So face up, it should be ace through king. And the seven is the only one with the blue back. Turn them over. Follow closely because this is one of the shuffles in the routine. I'll go over it again at that time as well. Count and push over six cards into your left hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then deal back and forth starting with the right hand and it'll also end with the right hand. Just deal back and forth. This will intertwine the cards. Then count them to the table. This will reverse the order. And you should end up with the blue seven on top. Turn them face up. We're almost done. Push over cards until you come to the four. Separate the two halves so you don't mess up the order. Remove the red back four and place it back to back with the red side of the double back card. Make sure the two treated halves are touching each other. And keep track of which side the halves are. You can see when you do it halfway, you can push, nothing happens. But you come to the bottom, they slide right apart. So the treated halves are up here, place it there. You can keep track of the halves by using your ace on the top. Set it up so the ace is upside down to you, but facing the audience. This way, you'll always know the orientation of your treated halves. This is what you should have, the ace, eight, two, nine, three, ten. There's a double card. And the two treated halves are on the top, then jack, five, queen, six, king, seven. This is what appears to be the blue set. Grab the other set that we placed off to the side it's a legitimate set, ace through king, all red backs. Place it face up inside the blue box with the flap side down. Place what appears to be the blue set inside the red box. Face up with the flap side down. And they are now ready for performance. I'm going to go step by step through the sequence of moves used in this routine and please refer to the performance part of this video for the other perspective. 
I begin with the red box on my right, just because it's easy to remember, red, right. Present your cards, starting with the red box. Turn it over so the flap is on the downside. Grab your cards and pull them out. You'll know they'll be face up. Pull them out that way, trick is ruined. Place that pile. Grab them tight, pull them out face up. Show the box is empty. It's a little misdirection. I'll explain a little bit more of why we're using the boxes. Show the box is empty. If they ask to handle them, hand them out. It's nothing tricky about the boxes. Take this pile, which appears to be the blue set, place it on top. You're gonna show they're in numerical order. When you get to about the third card, this is when you mention the blue set is in numerical order. Nobody's gonna question it, it came out of the blue box. Hold them tight, when you get to the king, or when you get to the ace, stop. Don't keep going, you'll flash that eight. So stop at the ace, square these up, up jog them slightly, hold them together. You're gonna to grab the whole pack like this and turn it over. We've just switched. We're gonna take this blue and place it there. This is the, the pack that came out of the red box. It goes there. Turn these over, you're gonna show the same cards again as if both sets are in numerical order. When you do the red ones, you can do this. Scatter them a little bit, square, don't fully square them up. Turn them over so they see a lot of red, then square them up. We're gonna use Magician's Choice to have a spectator select red or blue. If they select blue, do it just like in the performance. We're gonna place that in there, I take the red. If they select red, then you say, okay, we'll use the red cards and we put the blue pack in there. This is always gonna go in there, regardless of what they chose. Be careful with them, don't flash them. You're gonna see all the red and upside down card, etc. This is why we, th while they're sitting here, this is very vulnerable. You don't wanna bump it. So that's why we start with the red. We do a quick magician's choice. This goes into the box. The box protects it. When I say I'm safely putting them in the box, I really mean it. Safely so they don't get flashed. This is when we get rid of the red box. We're gonna do the shuffle I showed you earlier. Count off six cards into your left hand. Now you're gonna be talking at the same time you're counting. So a good way to do this, how I do it, I just go one, two, three, one, two, three. You can talk while you're counting. You know you got six cards. Start with the right hand and do the same shuffle I showed you earlier. Square them up. Now this is when you're gonna explain about the randomizer shuffle. This is actually called a swindle switch by Paul Curry. As you're dealing the cards down, you can deal or you can switch. Now watch this, as I switch, and nobody catches this, it flies right by everyone. Paul Curry's swindle switch. Whether you switch them or not, it still remains the same order. See, this goes down if you switched it, but for some reason it just flies by everybody and it looks like they're being shuffled. Now you go through that once, this is the explanation. You're showing the person how to do this, all right? You've reversed the order one time. Keep track of this. This is when you hand it to them. Now they're going to do a randomizer shuffle, which is actually the swindle switch. Make sure they do it correctly. Explain to them, show them, and explain it again. So they're basically going to reverse the order again we can do it it does nothing it's just reversing the order now the the cards should be in this order when they turn it over you say okay let's peek at the bottom card it's going to be the seven so have them turn it back over and they're going to reverse the order again get to the seventh card two three four five six on that one they're going to turn it over guess what it's the four and then they can continue on and they can switch them or deal them. Now this is the pack that they are holding. This is going to be the pack we're going to use. Following the routine, be careful when you slide these out, hold them nice and tight. Remember when we put them in the second time, we put them face down. Pull them out. 
get rid of this, and now you can begin your matching process. Have them turn over their cards and hold them in dealing position only face up. So they've turned it over, guess what? They have an ace. Turn over your pack. I like to go end from end. If you go book wise, you're taking a chance you may flash. So hold it tight and do book end to end. Now, if for some reason you come out and you're like this, where you know that ace is now facing you, it's supposed to be the other way, just turn it around like this. Nobody's gonna pay any attention to it. They're just gonna think you're being polite and aiming the ace so they can see it better. Go through the matching process. They have the eight, I have the eight. We go through, everything should match. And you can milk this down. This is a five minute routine on the performance on this video. You could spend 10 minutes on this and have fun with it. I got the 10. That's what they have a face down card. You have a face down card. Now this is when you reveal it. And this is where your gimmick is gonna come into effect. You know your treated halves, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break them apart. You know your treated halves are there on the top. And if you push here, they will separate. But as long as, and hold these fingers a little low, don't grip them too much here. Hold them a little low, push a lot of pressure, and that single card will come off. I'm holding two cards. As long as I hold it on the top side, they will not come apart, and I place it down. Keep it, do it like that, you won't have any problems. Guess what? See, it's the four. You have the jack, I have the jack. Five, five. Queen, queen, six, six. Now, instead of just revealing the king, I'm down to three cards. I'm gonna do a double push off and hold them together just for a second, just enough to flash that, hey, you messed up. Put them right back. You wanna turn it over at this point and say, hey, we need a little more shake, because what you wanna do is flash that blue again. This is solidifying that all these cards are blue. Turn it over and say, oh, there we go. We matched the king. They have the seven, you have the seven and turn this over, you're flashing another blue. We've flashed three blue backs and we only have two. Square them up. Have them square their cards up and then if they can, spread them out a little bit to reveal that inverted card. Make sure you've maintained your orientation, meaning when you pick them up and square them up, don't let them get turned like this. You wanna keep track of where your gimmick part is. Next, we're gonna reverse order half of this set. We're gonna push cards over. Notice how these go in the bottom? We're gonna push them on the top. This is gonna reverse them. And as you're doing that, you're explaining about the table snap, shade shifter, shuffle. And right when you get to that blue card, say shade shifter, shuffle, they're gonna see the blue. Place this whole pile back on top, snap, Turn this over. When you snap, don't flash that red. Don't pull it up so high they see the red because you want it to change after the snap. Turn it over, grab it on the, on the top here and flip it. They've all turned red because you're gonna start dealing them out. One, two, you're pushing them out. You're gonna get to this four. Now your treated side is on the bottom here. So when you push this time, they're gonna separate. You're gonna up jog it, continue on. Now notice, the next one, push hard on this one because those are the two blue backs stuck together. So you're gonna to come to that four, make sure your thumb is on the top, not down here, push it over, up jog it, push hard, get those cards over, and you come out and you're clean. Flip that over. Now you can put this on the bottom. If you're afraid, I don't know if you notice, if it hits the light just at the right, where if I can find it, right there. Uh, half of it reflects and the other doesn't. Don't worry about somebody noticing something that they may or may not get a glimpse of and they're not even gonna be, like they don't even know what it is. Now, if you're gutsy a little bit, you can spread them out. These are my final thoughts. Make two sets. Use the clubs from your spare cards. You'll only need one more double back card and a blue back seven of clubs to complete the set. The ace can still be used to mark the orientation of the treated halves. Use these for practicing so you don't wear out your main set. 
choose the right person to help out. Select someone who is willing to cooperate and take commands. You can test this on a couple people by asking each of them to, let's say, place their hand over one of the boxes. Remember, you're beginning with the two closed boxes on the table. Secretly watch for the person who does it first. Pick that person. Follow what I'm saying? No one will have a clue as to what you're actually doing. Let's face it. You're handing the cards to another person and they have to do exactly as you say. Use methods like that to select the best person for the job. Be sure to give them step-by-step -step instructions, guide them along through their parts, and you should do well. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment if you have something to say, but please no spoiler alerts. And that's it.